Hi everybody, this is Barbara Drazga, aka The Deal Diva, and we are going to talk today about how to get the edge with suppliers for your Amazon FBA business. So how to get the vendor edge, um, not just during these unusual times, but in general, but we're gonna focus on some, uh, some things that are happening right now and opportunities that are coming out of those things that will help your business and the vendors, in fact. So we are April, whatever, <laughs> April 3rd. If you're anything like me, the days are sort of melding into each other. Today is Friday, that month I know because we're doing this on Friday. And um, uh, we're having some challenges, right? With products and getting them into Amazon. And uh, um, yeah, uh, somebody's asking me any word on FBA opening up your guess is as good as mine they say april 5th april 7th but that's not what we're going to talk about today because you know that's all like a moving target and those are things over which we have no control right so my goal is during this crisis to focus on the things that i can you know move the needle in my business and one of those things is negotiating with vendors so here's the reality of here's the landscape right now okay so the landscape is that unfortunately a lot of Amazon sellers are going to go out of business. They didn't have um, the cash flow or, uh, or what they needed to get through this crisis. Pardon me. And they will unfortunately go out of business. Um, so if that's any of you, please contact me so that I can, you know, coach you through it and, and just be here as a um, inspiration resource for you. Talk about what your next step is. Please message me. My name is Barbara Drazga. Find me on Facebook reach out to me and maybe I can help coach you through it. At any rate, so what's happening on the vendor side? Here's a funny thing. I was in Home Depot yesterday, believe it or not. I had to be, I'm doing, uh, finishing up a kitchen renovation that uh, can't be stalled because I can't use the kitchen. So I was picking up a, um, a faucet for the kitchen sink and I overhear a manager walk by to the break room and he says something to the effect of, um, you know what I'm really worried about that after this is over, a lot of our vendors are going to be gone. And that really hit home for me that there are a lot of wholesale suppliers, manufacturers, brand owners, vendors that will not make it through this crisis. So it led me to think, how can we help some of them stay in business? So last week I received an email from one of my suppliers and um, they they're in a state where they're locked down and they can't go to the warehouse, but they did a special. They said, place orders by Friday and we'll give you 30% off everything. I'm like, yeah. So I bought a, punch, a bunch of pet products from them and I got 30% off and free pallet shipping, which is just crazy. I mean, that's just a crazy deal, but with the caveat that they can't ship until sometime later in, uh, in April, I'm okay with that. So there are vendors out there that are just giving screaming deals right now um, on their products just to stay in business, right? Just to move product so that they, they can be liquid, they can be solvent after this. Um, one of the things that, hap that is happening with the, a lot of sellers going out of business is all those vendors that would you know, need your reaction when you reach out to them and they say, uh, we're not taking any more Amazon sellers, well, they're losing some of their Amazon sellers, those companies that are going out of business, right? So they are much more open now to, in my opinion, okay, test this out for yourself, uh, in taking new Amazon sellers, right? Especially if you approach them from a perspective of, look, we not only sell on Amazon, but we also sell on multiple channels, you know, eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, and I've been researching companies that do the merchant, uh, the multi-channel fulfillment. There are several of them out there. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more research on a few of them before I mention any of them because I want to, uh, I want to check their um, reputation in the industry, right? And make sure that they're doing a good job before I, I recommend any to you or tell you about them. So you can have all that product sent to a merchant, uh, to a multi-channel fulfillment, a 3PL, third-party logistics company that will fulfill all orders. They'll send stuff in Amazon for you. They'll create bundles for you. They'll fulfill individual orders on different marketplaces, Walmart, eBay, Mercari. Um, one of them I think even does Etsy, believe it or not. So there are, there are ways now, there are things now that you can get the edge with vendors by offering them things that before they wouldn't consider. Even if they're selling themselves on Amazon, 
and they say, look, we don't want any more Amazon sellers on our listings. Now you can come to them and say, look, we understand that, but your only sales channel is Amazon. And it is at the moment shut down for all intents and purposes. You can't, they can't send in product, right? Uh, they, they can merge and fulfill, but that's about it, but they're not on any other platforms. So one of the opportunities we have right now is to approach them saying, look, we can get your product on other platforms so you are no longer platform specific, okay? So that's one of the opportunities. Another opportunity I was thinking about this morning is a lot of local stores shut down, a lot of them, right? So they've got product in their stores. Now, maybe that's not a traditional wholesaler. Oh, hi, Boo. Boo just walked in. Maybe that's not a traditional wholesaler, but it, it is product sitting there behind closed doors. And if it's local, uh, an essential uh, definition of an essential business. I had to look this up because uh, a couple of days ago they locked down Arizona. The, uh, not when I say lockdown, that's probably not a good. We're stay-at-home orders, right? But essential businesses are allowed to go. So I was I was frantic that I wouldn't be able to go to my warehouse, right? Uh, but I found out that we can because I'm an essential business because I get products into the marketplace. So these companies, these brick and mortar companies could end up being a vendor for you short term because you might be able to say, hey, look, I'll take everything in your health and beauty department and they can reorder from their wholesalers when they open up again. For them, they're trying to pay the rent. They're trying to keep the lights on. They're trying to you know, keep the security guard paid, right? So for them, they just need capital. So there's an opportunity locally for you to identify stores that are closed, find their owners, go on Google, you know what I say, Google is your friend, and find out who owns that store, get in touch with them, go on LinkedIn, find them, go on Facebook, find them, right, message their Facebook pages, do what you gotta do to get to the person who makes a decision for that store. Say, look, we'd like to take everything in this category off your hands at wholesale plus maybe, you know, 5%. So it gives them a little bit of money, but on top, profit on top of it, but it gets rid of that inventory for them so that it's not sitting there. And some of it might even have expiration dates. So they're even more motivated to move that stuff that you're still able to sell, but they don't know how long they're gonna be locked down and they need the capital. So it's win, win, win. Okay, so what, are the, what was one of the other things I was thinking? Oh yeah, so it occurred to me that uh, I had buy supplies as many of us do to do merchant fulfilling, right? So I bought uh, these really great bags, uh, poly bags, but not off of Amazon because Amazon had like a five week delivery window. That doesn't help me, right? So I just Googled, of course, and I found this great company and the, my bag showed up, my poly bags, two different bags, poly bags is really cool, like big turquoise bag that I can put pretty much all of my products in. I'm in the bedding market, so I need like bigger bags. And, um, and it came within not even, what is it, 24 hours? I ordered it Thursday morning, it came Friday afternoon, something like that. And I'm like, how the heck did they get this to me? And free shipping. They have, then I come to find out, I've checked their website and they have warehouses in four different cities, four different states. So I thought, well, gee, how can I resell their product? Just occurred to me this morning. This, these are the thoughts I have when I'm taking a shower, right? My brain sort of, you know, the shower gets the cobwebs off my brain and uh, I get some clarity. So I thought I'm going to reach out to them because I don't need to have the product shipped to me. I can, I mean, I don't have to, from out of state, I don't have to pay to have that product, you know, shipped to me. I can get shipping for free. I can get it within two days. I could resell their products. Why not contact them and set up a wholesale account? So I'm going to do that after we get off the Zoom and um, see what they say. And then I'm also going to find other companies that are providing essential products locally, but not products we're seeing as essential everywhere, like, you know, toilet paper and, oh, hi, boo, hand sanitizer and things, but essential products for businesses like ours who need things to stay open and see if I can find local companies. I'll save on shipping and I could even have them, you know, deliver it or I could, you know, run down there with a truck and pick it up and stick it in the storage unit, whatever. So those are some ideas I'm thinking about. Now here's, here's why it's important. I believe right now to triple down. This is not the time to slam on the brakes in our businesses. We have to be strategic about how we tri triple down. But the work that we do right now during this weird bubble of time that where there's so much uncertainty and there's so much, well, we don't know what's going to happen next, right? If we're strategic and we have an, a, a plan, an execution plan, and we methodically implement that plan, 
during this time when a lot of other people are just stalled. And, you know, let's be honest, there are days or times during a day where I feel stalled. I, I usually, it's usually triggered by turning on the news. I know, stop turning on the news, I get it. Uh, but I, I kind of have to keep up with what's going on. It's like, almost like a car wreck, you know you're not supposed to look, but you need to look to see if it's somebody you love, right? That's kind of how I'm feeling about the news, but then it puts me in a little bit of a funk for a little bit and I gotta yank myself back. I know we're all in the same boat, all right? So uh, I say this with the intention of, you know, let's give ourselves some grace and not like, come on, what's wrong with you? Let's go. Let's just understand that that's going to be the ebb and flow of our energy. But when we come back to, you know, uh, getting in our, our center, it's, it should all be about implementing our execution plan right now. Because right now, the things that we do are going to reflect on what our business looks like in 90 days. All right. And by the way, I, I read, this is not confirmed, but there was some internal memo in Amazon that got, you know, out on one of the news sites. Again, everything could change. But I read that they are still planning on moving ahead with Prime Day, which would kind of make sense because that's in usually in July, right? Because now they've got, they were hiring 100,000 workers. Now they are flush with workforce. So when this, um, this, this uh, you know, spike in business starts waning off for them, they're going to have a lot more workers that they need to keep busy. And that's going to be right around June, July, we're hoping, right? So start planning now and implementing now, locking down more wholesale accounts so that you are ready for Prime Day and fourth quarter. Back to school is going to be kind of weird. I, I have no predictions is what's going to happen with back, back, the back to school season uh, with wholesale, with bundles, private label. I'm really not sure because are people going back to school or is the new normal that more people are going to homeschool? Could very well be. So we're gonna have to wait and see how that works out. I am not buying backpacks right now. Normally every year I would do a backpack bundle or two or three or four. I am holding off on the backpacks, but I might do a different type of bundle for kids that are being educated at home. And I posted that in the Deal Diva group. If you go to facebook.com slash groups slash Deal Diva, you'll see a post I did on bundle ideas. And one of them was, uh, like a cap and gown and graduation certificate for different grades for kids who are you know missing out on graduation but they're, they're graduating from one grade to another at home so anyway go check out that that post i did and i'll keep dropping product and bundle ideas in that group here's the other consideration a lot of us are used to going to amazon using our handy dandy tools you know and scraping the data and saying okay source this well, those numbers are pretty skewed right now, wouldn't you agree? They're, it's, it's like not normal. So if you start sourcing things now that where the rank is just crazy good and everything sells a second hits the warehouse, that those same products, that, that's not, I don't think it's gonna last, right? So you need to look at your Keepa chart and your Camel Camel Camel. You need to look at your data further back. Oh, hi, boo, good job. Um, further. <laughs> work at home guys, <laughs> further back than just the past 60 days, all right? And then even before that, it's a little bit skewed because before that, we've got fourth quarter numbers, right? So if you're looking at evergreen products, you really need to expand out that keep a chart to a year and look at a year's worth of data prior to fourth quarter and prior to this craziness to identify what sells evergreen normally in normal times. All right, and then start setting up, looking for those accounts. So uh, let me go over to the chat and see if you guys have any questions. Again, we're talking about how to get the edge with wholesale vendors in today's, well, and beyond, in today's crazy environment, but and, and beyond, okay? How to reach out to them. And if I could leave you with one piece of advice that you implement, and like, that not that you implement, but you get into your brain and um, you make it your starting point for every communication with a vendor, uh, with brand owner, with supplier, whatever we're calling them, I'm just calling them vendors, it's big lumping them together. If I could get you to think differently about one thing, it would be, before you contact a vendor, I want you to make a list, just a little brainstorm list. Write this down. What problems do they need solved right now? Their problems. Instead of entering the conversation with, hey, Mr. Supplier, I wanna buy your stuff. 
that's all about you. Make sure you've got a list of at least three things of what problems does that, that brand owner, that vendor have right now that you can help them solve. And you start your conversation from that perspective, the vendor's perspective, not yours. And I think you will significantly increase your chances of locking that supplier and also developing a longer term relationship with this vendor. So let me cycle that back around to the company that sent me the email with 30% off my order last Friday. I got an email right before this call from the, uh, it's a family owned company. And first I got the email and then right away my phone rang, the father had sent the email and the son had called me and apparently a portion of my order was canceled. I'm like, okay, well I'm doing bundles with these pet products. Uh, and the reason I'm entering the pet market is a couple of reasons. One, I know I'm going on tangents, but bear with me. One, a lot of more people are adopting pets during this time and fostering pets. So there's also a pet company that went out of business here locally, a retail brick and mortar, and they're auctioning off their assets. And I'm on that auction to acquire their trade names and their email list of subscribers to their, uh, they had like a subscription service for, and they have 6,000 um, subscribers to that service. And I want to buy that list. So that means I need something to sell them. So it was perfect storm when I got that email with the 30% off, they have pet products, but I need the, the first offer to them is going to be a bundle, but I need equal amounts of prop, you know, equal amounts um, of quantity for each of the three things I'm going to put in the bundle. So I get this email saying that one of the products, they can't deliver X amount. So now my quantities are all skewed. And that was the email I got right before this call. And then the call from the, from junior. And I could hear in his voice, his name's Max, and I hear in his voice, I said, he says, Barbara, I'm so sorry. You, I mean, the warehouse, they're in a state where they can't leave home unless it's to go like to work, pick up groceries, and they're, they're past the stay at home. It's like a mandatory stay at home. I think it might be in Illinois. Anyway, they managed to get to the warehouse and they got an influx of orders, but they didn't have proper inventory control. They, it's him and his dad palletizing things because they don't have workers. They can't bring in employee, their employees in right now. So they are just for flux, you know, he's he just apologizing. And I said, all right, let's, my perspective is, darn it, I don't have all I need. And I had to switch that and say, what's going on with you guys? What's your reality right now? And how can I help? And I said, look, let me just get, let me get on this training call and talk to my tribe and tell them what's going on in general with, um, you know, having the vendor edge but then I'll cycle back around to a phone call with you and I will take a look at your catalog and see what else you have that might be able to meet my needs. So he, I might be able to buy other things from him, right? Change my order, uh, reduce my order on the, you know, the initial pet supplies and, and to, he's stressed. I mean, you can just hear it. Everybody is right. But he's like super stressed because now he's got to contact a bunch of customers that stepped up and said, I'll take that 30% and here's my order. Thousands of dollars, a pallet full of stuff. I'll take care of this. And now he's gonna call each one of us and say, oops. So from his point of view, he's super stressed about having to disappoint customers. So instead of me being a disappointed customer, I can switch this to say, look, I don't need my stuff right away. Let me check out your catalog. As long as you give me 30% off on whatever else I add to that pallet so we can get a full pallet. Let's see how we can work this out together. Any way that I can help him reduce his stress right now, that goes a long way in developing a relationship long-term with this company, right? Now, would you agree that I can call in six months and say, hey, man, I, I see something on your website you just got in. I really want these. What's the best discount you, can you do for me? Instead of saying, we don't discount, he will remember me as one of his buyers who is easy to work with. Does that make sense? who helps solve his problems right now. So goodwill goes a long way right now for the longer term relationship with suppliers. So do you guys have any questions? Uh, let me go over in the chat here. So Brent says emails, wow, you are smart email list, customer list are gold, yes. And Brent, they're also auctioning off uh, their trademark names and their websites. And I even registered websites that are similar um, so that when I get that list, I can transition them over to another subscription program um, with even more thing, well, they haven't been, you know, getting anything from that supplier because they've been out of business for a couple of months now. So I'll be able to warm them up and give them things that they're used to, and then even more. 
So yes, I believe in acquiring assets right now. That is part of my strategic plan that I'm implementing right now. I've got an execution plan. I've got two big whiteboards. I've taken my dining room and completely transformed it into what I'm calling mission control with two rolling whiteboards and a flip chart. And this is my office right now when I do my videos, but I have a standing desk out in my main living area and that is my mission control. And it's all about acquiring assets undervalued assets that I can leverage um, by the end of this year in different ways. Okay, so uh, do you share who you execute project, how I execute, you know, and I would, I will, I'm very interested in doing a, a webinar on how to create an execution plan and then implement the execution plan. And I want it to be with not just somebody like me, but with me and two or three really smart people and we, uh, you know, we share our ideas together instead of just listening to me as a talking head. We'll get a bunch of really smart minds on here and, um, and share how to create and implement an execution plan. So yes, I do have that on my content list. I've got a big long list of things that I think we all need to learn right now. And um, I'm, I'm working on getting that content out to you and lining up people to, to help us with that content. Okay, what would you have to say to those who are just starting in the wholesale business during this time? Congratulations, Taylor. I think now is a great time to start. You have no bad habits to lose, right? And um, instead of just focusing on Amazon FBA, I highly encourage you to look at this business from a multi-platform perspective so that you're hedging your bets. About 18 months ago, I've been preaching this for 18 months, that if Amazon flips a switch and your account goes away, what do you do? And I've been systematically over the course of a year and a half uh, implementing other sales channels in my business. And you know, when you say, when I said that 18 months ago, I'm like, okay, that's never going to happen, right? Maybe you'll get shut down. You can get reinstated. There are things you can do. Never in any of our lifetimes would we imagine that what is happening right now is reality, right? That we can't ship things in that there's a five week delivery time on the things that we have in Amazon's warehouse, that Amazon's warehouses are closing when there's a COVID-19 positive test result where our products are sitting, right? So this is a very, very scary time right now for this bubble of time. If you are an Amazon FBA only seller and you're not selling essential products. So the, the it, it came to bite me in the butt, I guess, that um, flippant remark of Amazon could flip the switch anytime. Well, they did. So now is the time, if you haven't already, when you're sourcing wholesale, to make sure that you're building other sales channels. Okay, Amazon is still a great platform, and they're going to come out stronger in the end. And they're they're being like tested under fire right now. Their systems, uh, everything is being tested under fire. So when you're tested under fire, what happens? You become stronger on the other end. You learn a whole lot on the other end, and that is exactly what Amazon is doing right now. They're being stress tested. So when this is all over, they're gonna be an even stronger platform. They're gonna have uh, many more buyers on the platform, fewer sellers because a lot of people are scared and going away. So I encourage you to flip that and say, okay, I'm gonna be one of the other ones on the other side of this who doesn't let fear rule my business decisions. And I take action and create an execution plan and implement it right now, systematically. So by the end of the year, when Q4 hits and all this pent up demand buys, you're gonna be in an amazing position. Now is a great time to start building your wholesale and your e-commerce business, in my opinion. And it's scary, I get it. But now is a great, I don't want you looking back in six months and saying, I wish I would have started in April. Okay, and I'm here to help you guys. Just reach out to me on Facebook, Barbara Drazga. You can join my group, dealdiva.com, I'm sorry. Um, well, dealdivawholesale.com is my website where there's a bunch of articles and things about selling on Amazon. And then um, I'm also branching out on that website to start putting more articles about uh, selling outside of Amazon. So I'm working on the content feverishly. Uh, you know, it's, um, it just takes a little bit of time to get the content done. And um, you can go to my Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva. And it'll say beyond FBA. That's my group. Uh, join that and ask any questions you have in there about everything and anything that's happening in your business right now. I'm happy to help you as is all the other, like there's so many smart people in that group who will jump on and answer your questions as well. Okay. So 
I'm going to go through some of these questions here. Dwight asks, when we talk to a new wholesaler, what do we say to help them? Well, first you have to ask, you don't say, the first uh, conversation is not to say something to them, it's to ask questions. So you become the data gatherer when you call them and say, hey, look, you know, we are a, um, a multi-channel e-commerce seller and Amazon is one of our platforms. And what are some of the biggest challenges you're having right now in this new normal and how can we help? So you're putting the conversation on them instead of pushing information out, can we have a wholesale account? Um, you know, trying to be manipulative or just ask them, what's your biggest fear right now? What's your biggest problem right now? And then you see if you can help them solve that. It's about relationship building. And out of that relationship building will come new accounts and new relationships that will last longer than, hey, Mr. Supplier, can I sell your stuff? Okay. So uh, Brent asked, do you have a personal Shopify website for each niche? So I use three different platforms for my niches for different reasons. The, um, uh, the pet niche is going to be on Shopify. Shopify is right now doing a 90 day trial. So if you haven't tried Shopify yet, 90 day trial, and that's why I'm trying out Shopify again. I'm cycling back around to it. So for 90 days, I can go and put up that pet website. There was, uh, there's another website you guys go look at. It's not quite finished yet. Uh, I don't know what it looks like because my, I put my de developer on it. I use WordPress with WooCommerce and that's a free platform. And I'll tell you how I came around to that website idea uh, while I was watching the news the other night. And then the third one, I use Groovecart for uh, another niche website. So the way the, this WooCommerce site came about was I was listening to the news and Bloomberg, is, I like the business news, right? Not the people are dying news because that freaks me out. But Bloomberg News, they're introducing the president of L.L. Bean and they asked him what's selling right now. And he says, slippers flying off the shelves. And then the second best seller is, guess, you guessed it, pajama bottoms. You don't know what I'm wearing on my feet right now. <laughs> slippers. Okay, so it hits me. In my warehouse, I had bought a liquidation deal of 800 pairs of USA flag slippers to sell during the election year this year. USA flag slippers sitting in the warehouse. And my brain connected with a post I'd done or, and seen about victory gardens, people building victory gardens to, uh, during World War II to feed themselves and as a way to connect with their and commune with their neighbors. And what do you think my brain put together? Victory slippers. And I looked on my phone and the domain wasn't taken. So I registered the domain, messaged my guy and I said, put up a WordPress WooCommerce site on this. I think I need to go in there and I, I need to um, set up Stripe and PayPal on it, so it's back on me again. But he did whatever he did. I haven't, I haven't looked at it since I told him to do that. But VictorySlippers.com will be a one product website currently that sells those USA flag slippers, and the marketing will be around, hey folks, we're all at home alone, you know, home working at home now. Let's wear these slippers to show solidarity as Americans, um, as we're going to get through this together. Everybody, show off your slippers. And then um, everybody who buys one, um, I might, you know, put a bundle, of course, right, uh, of like an American flag sticker that you put in your window that uh, your neighbors can see when they walk by and then encourage them to post them wearing their slippers on social media, right? So that's the plan for these 800 slippers that I got on a crazy liquidation deal. Now, what else could I do with that site long term? I could have every flag in, the, in every country, right? So there's all sorts of things I could do longer term with more products. But for right now, it was just, oh crap, I got those slippers there. I can't send them in the, in the Amazon because I don't think, I don't think slippers are really, <laughs> are really essential items. They are for me. I don't know about you. Um, so anyway, that's one of the ways that I'm pivoting is what do I have right now that I can't send into Amazon? I've got private label products, liquidation products, and wholesale products. What else can I do with them that addresses a need right now? So victoryslippers.com. Again, I don't know what it looks like, because I just had him do it a couple of days ago and I haven't cycled back around to it to edit it and do what I got to do. But um, that's a WooCommerce site, WordPress with WooCommerce. That was a long answer to a short question, right? Brent, uh, let's see, Dwight says, when we talk to a new wholesaler, what do we say? Should we do the same thing with our current wholesale accounts? Dwight, absolutely. That's a great idea. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, so contact your current suppliers and say, hey, look, What's going on with you? Are you are you safe? Is your family safe? That's the first thing, you know, and mean it. 
say, look, I'm, I'm worried about you and your family. Are you guys okay? Now, in, from a business perspective, what's going on? What do you need? Have you seen your orders go down? Uh, can we help you in any way, get more products into Amazon? Um, what, do, what do you need? Right? That's the question I would lead with, or I, I am leading with, with my suppliers. What do you need right now? How can I help? Uh, and sometimes it's just a conversation that makes them feel better, right? And that's okay. So yes, reach out to all of your current suppliers and have a conversation with them. Uh, Brent says, now do you have to build content around each of these niche websites running Facebook? So that is a whole different conversation. Why don't we do a, uh, we'll set up a training on how, how do you do what I just said? You know, the victory slippers. How do you uh, create a multi-channel with uh, a fulfillment or a niche, a niche product um, and build out social media um, assets around that product? Well, so we'll do a different training on that. That's, um, I'll make sure I save this chat so I can cycle back around to that, Brent. So, uh, Taylor, what would you have to say to those who are just starting? Yes, you, you got my uh, great time to start a business right now, right now. Um, brilliant. Do you share who you actually, let's see, email list. Not only are some suppliers losing some Amazon sellers, they are also losing brick and mortar retails. Huge, huge. So here's the thing. All of the trade shows, the big ones, were canceled. ASD canceled. The Chicago houseware show, huge, canceled. Now at these trade shows, this is where those exhibitors did one of two things. One, that's where their current customers would come and place their orders. And their current customers could be e-commerce sellers, brick and mortar sellers, big chain stores, boutique stores. That's where their customers would come and say, let me see your new product and place, write their orders, okay? And then the second thing is that's where they get new customers. So when these shows were canceled, now these suppliers don't have access to the new customers. They would of course have the contact information for their current customers, but like you said, a lot of those current customers are brick and mortar. And if they're not selling essential items, if those suppliers aren't selling essential items to brick and mortar, then they're, they've lost those customers for now. So they are scrambling to find new outlets for selling their products. Now, I wanna encourage you to make a list after you get off this, this webinar, make a list of what are the things that you know as an Amazon seller? What are the knowledge pieces that you have that you just take for granted? Oh yeah, I know how to market. I know how to set up a mini chat, you know, a chat bot. I know how to do this, but you just use it in your own business. Make a list of those things, even though they might sound to you, you're like, doesn't everybody know how to do that? No, they don't. Make a list of the things that you do really well naturally in your business, or you even outsource to other people that are services that could be offered to brand owners. See where I'm going with this? So the things that we do in the course of business as Amazon sellers, and by the way, we're no longer going to call ourselves, um, ourselves Amazon sellers. I think it's official now, right? We are e-commerce sellers who sell on Amazon's platform, all right? When you change how you, uh, the title you're giving yourself in your business, then you, you open up more possibilities, in my opinion. So when you make a list of, here are the things I do really well. I'm really good at my, writing marketing copy, you know, and, and uh, writing highly optimized um, listings and doing keyword research. You can then offer those services to brand owners. Make sense? So to help them get more sales, find more customers. So there are things you know how to do naturally well that you can now use to help brand owners. So yes, you're right. A lot of brick and mortars going out of business. Any word on FBA opening up? No, uh, I was small, still I see the speaker, let's see. Any other questions here? Uh, to, 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 oh, by the way, one of, my, um, one of my followers, I don't know if you're on here, but uh, she, we mentioned in the last webinar that now would be a great time to get your uh, pool floats. So if you have any pool toys whatsoever, anything, get them up on FBM. And she, uh, she did that. She said she had stuff and she'd forgotten about and she listed it and they sold immediately. So any kind of pool toys, because I live in Arizona. So people are in their pools right now. If you, they've got a heated pool, it's like 75 degrees here. People are already in their pools and anticipate being in their pools all the way through summer, of course. So if you've got anything that's related to stay at home in the summer pool toys, like pool floats, um, outdoor camping, and tents that they can use in their backyard, what a fun bundle that would be, right? 
Um, so, okay, so now I'm brainstorming out loud. Sorry about that. So let's see if we've got any other questions here. And then, hey, Ray, there she is, Ray Rolini. She's the one, Rolini. She's the one who um, sold out on those pool toys by popping them up. Okay, so Brent says, best way to reach out to vendors is to get on the phone with them versus email. So uh, that's okay, Debbie, there is a recording. I am recording this, so I will pop that out after I upload it to YouTube. So Brent says, best way to reach out. So I don't like yes or no questions. I like open-ended questions. So there is no best way. Do both. Which one would be more personal? I'd say a phone call. But are they in, you know, are they even in the warehouse or office? Probably not. You know, maybe getting a phone call when they're working at home, but now they're in a different environment. They get kids running around. That will kind of like, oh, I'm not really sure. Wait, is this business? Who is this? So maybe start with an email in this environment and say, hey, look, I just wanted to reach out um, and see if you've got time for a conversation this week. I just want to chat with you, see how you're doing, see how the business is doing, see how I can help you. Uh, we're kind of all in this together, and we are, right? And you just say this. We're all in this together. I'm an e-commerce seller. Let's just have a conversation this week. What's a good time for you? And I use Calendly, Calendly, it's Calend.l, look up Calendly, and you can set up an appointment. Say, look, I'm available between three and five today, go pick a time. And so that might be a email as a way to just start the conversation. Cold calling people, people right now, I, I don't know about because you don't know where they are. Like physically, you, it's just, there's no office hours anymore right now, right? They're not sitting in an office taking calls saying, hello, XYZ wholesale, right? Uh, they're home. So, um, hope that answers your questions. Debbie, yes, there's a recording. Okay, Dwight, is it okay if you're already focused on a niche and have a WooCommerce site? Yes, Dwight, in fact, that gives you an advantage. You're ahead of the game. I don't currently have a 3PL to sell through other channels, so I would have to do all the work. Is this something that can be done by one person? Depends on what your volume is, Dwight, but you can start with doing it yourself. You know, I believe in tightening my circle. You guys ever seen, uh, it's Antonio Banderas is in it, um, you know, the swashbuckler thing. What is that movie that, with the mask? Help me out. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. And Anthony Hopkins is training, uh, thank you, Zorro. <laughs> thank you. I don't know why my brain just had a brain fart there because I said Antonio Banderas and I got a little bit distracted. So, uh, <laughs> so there's a part where Anthony Hopkins is training him and he puts him in this big giant circle, right? In this underground cavern. And um, he keeps making the circles these concentric circles smaller and smaller. And he says, this is your space. This small circle here, this is where you land. This is what you have to operate from because it gives you hyper focus instead of having a big playing field. Now we've, so I believe in pulling in my circle and operating from this really focused space. So if you're focused on a niche um, and, and you're one person, that's gonna be fulfilling. Get your, your focus right now is, okay, let's get this model working. Let's get the product up. Let me you know, get it in a small quantity to test it out, fulfill it myself, and then as it grows, you can expand out those circles and send it to a 3PL um, or have like a neighbor processing those, some of those orders where you can still practice social distancing. They might be out of work, right? So you can bless them with work. So there are ways that you could start here in this focus circle and then expand out after, after it starts growing. Does that make sense? So right now, I think it's really important for us to just get hyper-focused, make our world as small as we can in order to hyper-focus because there's so many things bombarding us right now that it's hard to focus if, we, if we're all over the place. Okay, make sense? Cool. All right. Thanks for the shout out, Barbie. You're welcome, Renee. Smart, smart people in here. I see a lot of uh, regular faces who are, you guys are, uh, uh, someday, one day, I will meet all of you. I promise. Face to face. So here's what I got going on. Vendor Edge. I'm putting together, finally putting together my program um, called Vendor Edge. And uh, I'm going to uh, get it out there and get all this content I know about um, creating value propositions for vendors and I'm going to give a crazy deal on it uh, because of the times we're having right now I'm just systematically creating the content every day working on it a little bit um, here and there and um, it's uh, I, I, I had planned to do it in March I'm sorry for those of you who are expecting vendor edge for me and didn't get it March was a little bit of a twilight zone month for all of us and uh, I admit it I was a little bit behind 
and uh, just trying to navigate, you know, personally, professionally, everything that's going on. So I apologize for the delay. Vendor Edge is coming. The next thing that I'm working on, um, there are two other projects I'm working on. I'll just put out, hi, boo. One is called Marketing CPR. I registered the domain where I will be helping vendors with their marketing. All those vendors who couldn't go to trade shows, who have no clue how to market to their existing customers, how to make offers to them, how to email them, how to help their existing customers. I'm gonna take a skill set that I have and turn that into a business and another income stream called Marketing CPR. I registered the domain, but that's all that's it's not up yet. Um, and then the third thing I'm working on, and this is the, the big one because I have to learn some things in order to get, in order to do it. I am launching Unicorn Profits, unicornprofits.com. I have the social media assets. I have a group. I have a page up and it will be, oh, and here's what I have to learn, um, the podcast. I am starting Unicorn Profits podcast and I had planned this year to do a Unicorn Profits live and it's aimed at business owners selling either physical products, digital products. It doesn't matter what your business model is, what your product is. Um, how you're selling the product. It is all about small business training, small and medium sized business training. And I've got a whole content list of, uh, it doesn't matter what you want to sell, what platform you're selling it on it. If you want to do digital products, training, consulting, uh, create events, uh, sell physical products, do uh, importing of physical products and just wholesale them. It doesn't matter. Unicorn profits will all be about being a unicorn in your industry where you're shining above the rest um, based on you know, a specific value system, uh, value proposition, uh, a unique product, a unique market. And the, one of the reasons I named it that, not only because I believe unicorns are really cool magical creatures and I like the analogy with having a business that's a cool magical thing, right? But in the financial world, apparently a unicorn describes a business that I believe has a billion dollar valuation in terms of business acquisition, acquiring a business. And I have also been learning on how to acquire businesses and build a business uh, that I can sell. So that's the trajectory I'm on. I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed. Those projects, Vendor Edge, Marketing CPR, and Unicorn Profits. So I'm working on all that stuff during this craziness. I'm executing systematically. I am hiring people to help me execute these things. And uh, I'm uh, acquiring assets of other businesses right now who need help and are just exiting me for whatever reasons. Uh, if you're one of those companies, just reach out to me and let's have a chat. And any other way I can help you, just reach out to me. I'm Barbara Drazga, D-R-A-Z-G-A on Facebook and ask me anything. So uh, sure, it blows my mind how you juggle all of your projects. You must be so organized. <laughs> I love you, Brent. I try. I am. I love organization I do, because I don't like chaos. Chaos freaks me out. So I have to put order to create chaos so I don't get freaked out right now. So my whiteboards are all project plans um, organized by color. I've got flip charts, the same thing. Uh, and that's, that works for me. Um, there's also a bunch of online or organizational stuff. I signed up for one of them. I haven't put all my project plans in yet. Uh, Infinity, it's called. Uh, with a Y at the end. So I'll be playing around with that. When you sleep, Barb? Well, Renee, right now, the quality of my sleep's not that great. I'm working on that. Uh, I do kind of crash at about 2.30 in the morning and then sleep to about 7.30. And then sometimes in the afternoon, about three o'clock, my energy wanes and I take a break and I do a little power nap on the couch, which my cat loves because he likes to snuggle. So he sees me head for the couch <laughs> with a blanket and he hops right up there and snuggles on the blanket with me. So it's, that's kind of a self-soothing thing too, because I uh, we get snuggled with my cat. So um, Dwight says, I now see why I was told to focus more on the wholesale business structure and move to private label when I can afford it. Absolutely. So Dwight, my business, oh, Brent says, I'm so glad I found you, Barbara. Oh my God, you just totally made my day. Thank you. Um, Dwight says, I now see why I was told to focus more on the wholesale business structure and move to private label when I can afford it. I agree. So I am in uh, I wholesale. So what I do was I test products out using wholesale orders. And then when they work, I put them in bundles, right? So I can expand out what's already working into niche markets. And then what, when a wholesale product just takes off, I go and have something similar private labeled. 
All right, so now I've got my own brand, for example, of baby blankets. I'm in the baby blanket market, of a specific kind of baby blanket with images. Those of you who follow me would not be surprised to know that I don't just sell pink baby blankets. I sell baby blankets with unicorns, right? But I had uh, a design developed and sent to the factory so I can have my own design of, so I niche into, I don't just sell a baby blanket, I sell a baby blanket for people who like mermaids, for people who like flamingos, right? So I, I don't have generic designs, I have niche designs. So anything that I do, of course, is going to have a niche spin to it because then I can create an ecosphere um, around that niche that I could then sell. But it starts with wholesale for me. I don't just go blindly, okay, give me a container load of this stuff. And that's the other thing that happened. When, um, when China first, uh, the coronavirus first hit China, um, it was right after Chinese New Year. So I've got a home decor product that was supposed to be in production and it didn't. I, it's, it, I think we finally got it on a container, but now we're having trouble filling up the rest of that container in order to get it shipped here because there was, you know, the, the manufacturers were shut down, factories were shut down. So I would have had no product if I was only doing private label and relying on that one product. It's still sitting in China and it's April. So there are, there are risks and rewards to every business model, which is why I like having, uh, I don't want all my eggs in one basket. I did that. I did that back in the real estate crash. I had real estate and I had stocks and I had my publishing company. And the publishing company, the money would come in and I'd put it in real estate and stocks. And guess what happened in 2008? Gone. That was a very hard, valuable lesson I learned and is with me to this day. I diversify my income streams. And I am praising the universe now that I did that. Okay, so one more question and then let's get out of here and let you guys get back to um, creating your execution plan. And uh, remember, brainstorm a list of things that uh, vendors are scared of right now, problems that vendors have right now, so that you can start a conversation with them from their perspective, not yours. So uh, Renee says, Brent, I've learned so much from Barb in the last two years. Just love her. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You know, you're, I'm sitting here talking to a screen, so you, you never know how much impact you have on anybody because we're all like working in these little bubbles. So I appreciate that feedback. Thank you so much, Renee. Uh, Dwight says, whoa, never thought of that. Awesome. Debbie, Barbara, I want to say thank you. I'm still pretty much a newbie. And when this pandemic hit, I thought that my business would pretty much be at a standstill until everything gets back to normal. But between this webinar and the other one that you did recently, you've boosted my confidence and given me hope that I can keep working and even grow my business during these difficult times. Debbie, I just, I just got goosebumps. Debbie Costa, thank you so much, sweetie. That just means the world to me, thank you. Okay, um, okay, so we got other people going live in here. Let's get off of here so you can get on other webinars and learn today. Thanks for the ideas. Um, if a wholesaler responds, do not provide our, Hey, Brett, go ahead and message me. You've got a lot more questions in here. Go ahead and message me on Facebook. Again, my name is Barbara Drazga. You can go to facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva, D E A L D I V A. I'll answer all your questions in there. Uh, anything I can do to help and support you guys through this time, please, please, please reach out to me. You are not alone. We're in this together. We got this. Okay. Let's thrive in 2020. Dream big. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for being on here. Thanks, Renee. I just saw that. <laughs>